Now, I've gotten a lot of DMs recently of people wondering whether or not I've gotten a hair transplant. I'm honestly flattered, but I did not. I went with PRP injections, which is a non-surgical approach in order to stimulate new follicle production. I'm here with you guys today to share with you my experience. Let's get into it. So what is PRP? PRP is a non-surgical process involving injecting platelet-rich plasma to stimulate new hair growth production. It also has applications in skincare, wound healing, scar tissue remodeling, and other aspects of the hair and skin. Now, the process for PRP is relatively simple. They draw blood from a vein, place that blood into a centrifuge, separate the red blood cells from the blood plasma, fill out the syringes with the plasma, and begin injecting it into your target areas, which can be anywhere from a few to a few dozen injections per side. And when it comes to my treatment planning with PRP, based on the assessment from my dermatologist, it was about three sessions. So I went September, October, November of the previous year in order to do that. And pretty much every time it was the exact same process of drawing blood and injecting the blood plasma back into my scalp. And the expected timeline for the results ha is uh, anywhere between 9 to 12 months. I did a follow-up for after I completed my treatment plan in February, but there wasn't any visible change because the expected results are 9 to 12 months. I had no idea why they called me back uh, three months in, but there was a initial bit of hair shedding that I noticed, especially continuing with microneedling and minoxidil. Now that 9 to 12 month time frame does line up relatively well between having about three to four hair growth cycles. It takes about three months for the hair to go from completely valis all the way up to terminal. Now, if you're having a shedding phase in there, you're going to have that bit of those growing pains where it looks worse before it looks a lot better. But one thing that I have noticed is right in the front of my head, it is noticeably denser. The recession on the sides was pretty bad. I don't think with just PRP, it's going to make the hairline look completely brand new. Like I've never had it. Probably I may need to do a minor hair transplant eventually if I decide to go uh, down that route, but I've noticed it definitely has thickened the majority of the hairs that are right in front of my crown, and the edges have started to come in a fair bit. Now, I did start using minoxidil twice a day instead of just once a day now, so there may be a little bit of hair shed there, but this is pretty much what my hair is looking like right now, and so far, I am pretty happy with the results, because when I started growing out my hair and started styling it a little bit, it doesn't look too horrible. I know, like, my hairline is still recessed, but thankfully, in the past two years, nothing has gotten worse, and it's slowly but surely making up some lost ground, even though if sometimes it feels a lot slower with different hair shed cycles. Now, the overall cost of PRP can also be relatively pricey. For myself, it was about $900 per appointment and it can range a little bit between 500 to about a thousand dollars per appointment so it's definitely something to consider if you have a three or four uh session treatment plan so you can be looking at anywhere between like 2700 to about four thousand dollars i paid right under three thousand dollars so about 2900 bucks in total and it's still cheaper than um a lot of the most affordable hair transplant options out there, especially if you're looking globally. So whether that's like South Korea, Colombia, Turkey, it still is a few thousand dollars cheaper. And I believe for myself, not having that bad of a recession and really started things a little bit more proactively, they advise the dermatologist and plastic surgeon advice for me to start with PRP because... I asked them questions about like related to this whole thing of like going to like to Turkey or Colombia or South Korea for hair transplants. And here in Canada, they don't really offer hair transplants for anyone under 35 because of the chance of regressing a lot further. So they were just like, let's start with PRP and see where we go. And the fact that it was a few thousand dollars cheaper than an entry level like uh, FUE or FUT which is really good. So definitely something to consider. This is what I have been doing for my hair for the past little while. Hopefully you guys found this helpful and informative. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a like, comment, your thoughts and opinions down below. I would love to hear them. And thank you all so much for watching. I hope to see you all in the next video.